Ever wondered why the U.S. presidents only serve for two terms? Let's trace back to where it all started. The precedent of two-term presidencies in the United States began with the very first U.S. president, George Washington. After serving two terms from 1789 to 1797, Washington decided not to seek a third term. His decision wasn't mandated by any law or constitutional clause, but rather a personal choice, setting a precedent that became an unwritten rule for future presidents. This two-term tradition was followed by presidents that came after Washington, not out of obligation, but out of respect for the democratic principle of rotation in office. The idea was to prevent the concentration of power in the hands of one individual for an extended period, thereby safeguarding the republic from becoming a monarchy or dictatorship. The tradition held strong for over a century and a half, with few exceptions. Presidents like Ulysses S. Grant, Theodore Roosevelt, and Woodrow Wilson sought a third term but were unsuccessful. Their failed attempts further reinforced the two-term tradition, making it seem almost like an immutable law. Now, you might be wondering, why only two terms? Why not three or even four? The answer to that lies in the balance of power. The presidency, the most powerful office in the United States, carries with it immense responsibilities and influence. Limiting a president to two terms ensures a regular infusion of new ideas and perspectives into the nation's leadership, preventing stagnation and the potential for abuse of power. But like all traditions, even this one was challenged. In 1940, Franklin D. Roosevelt, the 32nd President of the United States, decided to run for a third term, breaking the long-standing tradition. This decision was not taken lightly and was influenced by extraordinary circumstances, marking a significant turning point in American political history. But in 1940, Franklin D. Roosevelt decided to break this long-held tradition. In the midst of the Great Depression and the onset of World War II, FDR made a choice that would reshape American politics. Franklin D. Roosevelt, or FDR as he's commonly known, made the unprecedented decision to run for a third term as President of the United States. This was a time when the nation was grappling with the Great Depression's crippling economic effects and the looming threat of a global war. FDR's decision didn't come without careful consideration. His political viability was substantial, he had won the 1936 election with more than two-thirds of the popular vote. The country was in distress, and the electorate had shown they trusted his leadership. Barbara Perry, a professor and director of presidential studies at the University of Virginia's Miller Center, explains, You have economic domestic issues and you have foreign policy with the outbreak of World War II in 1939. FDR's third term bid was driven by these pressing issues and his proven ability to lead the nation during such turbulent times. Roosevelt's decision wasn't without controversy. The two-term precedent, set in place by none other than George Washington, was a powerful tradition. As Perry puts it, there was nothing but precedent standing in his way. But still, precedent, especially as it relates to the presidency, can be pretty powerful. Despite the controversy, if FDR's decision to run for a third term was ultimately validated by the American people, the voters, faced with an economy still recovering from the Great Depression and a world on the brink of war, opted for stability. They elected FDR to a third term, marking a significant shift in American politics. The decision for a third term was a pivotal moment in history. It proved that in times of crisis, tradition could be set aside for the greater good of the nation. FDR's third term, and later his fourth, demonstrated the potential for extended leadership in the face of national and global crises. Thus, FDR became the first and last president to win more than two consecutive presidential elections. FDR wasn't the only president who sought a third term, but he was the only one who succeeded. Before FDR, President Ulysses S. Grant had attempted to secure a third term. Despite his significant popularity during his initial two terms, Grant's third campaign in 1880 was unsuccessful. He was edged out by James Garfield for the Republican nomination. Grant's failure was largely attributed to his administration's corruption scandals, which tarnished his reputation and undermined his bid for a third term. Theodore Roosevelt, another president who sought a third, non-consecutive term, found himself in a similar boat. 
After serving out the remainder of President William McKinley's term and winning re-election, Roosevelt tried his luck again in 1912. But his attempt was thwarted by William Howard Taft, partly due to the split within the Republican Party caused by Roosevelt's progressive Bull Moose Party. Woodrow Wilson, too, sought a third term but was unsuccessful. His bid for the Democratic nomination in 1920 failed, largely due to concerns about his health following a severe stroke and his controversial stance on the League of Nations. The American public, it seemed, was not ready for a third Wilson term. Even after the passing of the 22nd Amendment, which limited presidents to two terms, Harry Truman, who had succeeded FDR, tried his hand at a third term. As he was president when the amendment was passed, he was exempt from the new rule. However, Truman's campaign for a third term in 1952 fell short after a loss in the New Hampshire primary. His declining popularity due to the Korean War and economic struggles was a major factor in his decision to withdraw. So, while multiple presidents attempted to secure a third term, their efforts were in vain. Whether due to political, health, or popularity issues, they were unable to replicate FDR's success. While these presidents failed in their attempts, FDR's success in his third-term bid was a game-changer. FDR's third-term campaign was a time of great uncertainty in the United States. The country was still grappling with the effects of the Great Depression, and the ominous clouds of World War II were gathering over Europe. In the midst of this turmoil, FDR decided to break with tradition and run for a third term. Roosevelt's campaign strategy was to maintain stability as much as possible. He presented himself as a steady hand, capable of guiding the nation through these challenging times. His campaign slogan, Don't Change Horses in Midstream, resonated with the public, as it encapsulated the need for experienced leadership during a period of crisis. Roosevelt faced off against Republican challenger Governor Alf Landon of Kansas, and the election was not even close. Roosevelt won by the fourth largest electoral vote margin ever, a testament to the public's trust in his leadership. His third-term victory was a clear mandate from the American people, who felt that he was the right person to lead them through the tumultuous times that lay ahead. However, FDR's decision to run for a third term was not without controversy. Critics argued that he was undermining the two-term precedent set by George Washington. Yet, the unprecedented challenges of the era demanded unprecedented measures, and Roosevelt was willing to shoulder that responsibility. Emboldened by his third-term victory, FDR decided to run for a fourth term. The stakes were even higher now, with the United States fully embroiled in World War II. His opponent this time was Republican businessman Wendell Wilkie. Though the electoral margin was not as wide as his previous victory, Roosevelt still managed to secure 55% of the popular vote, affirming his place in the White House for another four years. FDR's success extended beyond a third term. He went on to win a fourth term, further breaking the two-term precedent. It was a testament to his leadership and the trust the American public had in him to navigate the nation through one of its most challenging periods in history. The impact of FDR's four-term presidency reached far beyond his time in office. The sheer length of his leadership, spanning 16 years, was unprecedented. It was during this period that the United States faced some of its greatest challenges, including the Great Depression and World War II. In the aftermath of FDR's reign, the nation reflected on the implications of such a long-serving president. Some saw Roosevelt's extended time in office as an anomaly, a product of extraordinary times. Others, however, viewed it as a potential risk, a door left ajar for the concentration of power in the hands of one individual for an extended period. This debate led to a significant change in the U.S. Constitution. In 1947, two years after Roosevelt's death, Congress passed the 22nd Amendment. This amendment, ratified in 1951, placed a limit on the number of terms a president could serve. Specifically, it restricted presidents to two elected terms in office, a total of eight years. This was not a universally popular decision. Critics argued that it limited the democratic choice of the American people, who should be free to elect a competent and popular leader for as many terms as they see fit. Supporters, however, saw it as a safeguard against potential abuses of power, 
and a reinforcement of the democratic principle of regular leadership turnover. The 22nd Amendment stands as a testament to the influence and controversy of Franklin Delano Roosevelt's presidency. His decision to break with tradition and seek a third term, and then a fourth, fundamentally reshaped the way America thinks about presidential tenure. In the end, FDR's decision to run for a third term not only broke a long-held precedent, but also led to a significant change in the U.S. Constitution. It's a fascinating chapter in American history, a reminder of how our past can shape and inform our present.